Every time your GDI engine fires, a microscopic war breaks out inside. Gasoline vapor sneaks past the rings, blends into the oil, and silently eats away at your engine's bearings and cam surfaces. Most people never notice, until that faint smell of fuel on the dipstick turns into real damage. Today, you'll see how the perfect storm of oil dilution and carbon buildup turns your engine's own oil into its worst enemy. Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Every time fuel injects into a modern GDI engine, it's blasted directly into the combustion chamber at pressures most people don't realize can exceed 2,000 PSI. That's far higher than the old port injection systems, where fuel sprayed behind the intake valves instead of straight into the cylinder. With such high force, a tiny portion of vaporized gasoline doesn't burn completely. It slips down between the piston rings and the cylinder wall, sneaking into the crankcase. From there, it mixes with the oil that's supposed to be protecting every moving part. You don't see it happen, and you probably wouldn't feel a thing while driving. But this silent leak is reshaping your engine's oil faster than you think. Gasoline thins motor oil almost instantly, reducing its viscosity. The oil's thickness and ability to form a strong protective film. That film is what keeps metal from grinding against metal inside the crankcase. Once it weakens, microscopic contact points begin wearing down bearings, cams, and journals. Over time, oil that's supposed to cushion moving parts begins to act more like dirty water. The first hints can show up on your dipstick. Maybe you've noticed that your oil levels seem slightly higher than before the last change. Maybe it smelled faintly of raw gasoline, or the oil turned darker far sooner than it should have. Those are all signs the barrier between combustion and lubrication has been breached. Under normal conditions, piston rings are designed to scrape excess oil off the cylinder walls while sealing in combustion gases. But no ring creates a perfect seal, even on a new engine. As the engine ages and those rings wear, gaps widen, letting even more vapor blow past. The more vapor that passes through, the faster the dilution problem grows. It's a snowball effect, especially in engines that run cold for much of their lives, such as those used mostly for short trips where the oil never heats up enough to burn off fuel contamination. Instead, the raw gasoline keeps accumulating, changing the chemistry of the oil with every mile. A well-known example came from owners of the Honda 1.5-liter turbo engine. Drivers noticed that after just a few thousand miles, their oil levels were actually going up, not down. When checked, technicians found that fuel had seeped into the crankcase, thinning out the oil so much that protection at startup was compromised. In cold climates, some engines even ran rough due to this fuel dilution effect confirming just how fast modern high-pressure injection can slip through those small internal gaps. It showed the automotive world that this wasn't a problem reserved for old, high-mileage engines. It was happening to newer ones built with cutting-edge tech. When that happens, an invisible feedback loop starts forming. Thinner oil means faster wear on metal components. That wear makes the rings and cylinder walls even less capable of sealing, which then lets in more fuel vapor. The process repeats over and over, each cycle compounding the damage. Within thousands of miles, not tens of thousands, a healthy-sounding engine can quietly lose vital protection. And since fuel dilution doesn't always trigger a check engine light, most owners never notice until wear begins affecting performance or oil consumption. What's worse is that no oil filter can separate gasoline from oil. Once that dilution begins, only draining and replacing the oil can restore viscosity and film strength. Stretching oil change intervals to the widely advertised 5,000 miles or beyond can leave your engine circulating a weakened blend of oil and solvent. By the time you notice rough starts or greater mechanical noise, the surfaces inside may already have lost their original precision. This isn't a rare, theoretical issue. It's already happening inside many modern engines without a single warning light. And while the problem below the pistons is serious, the buildup forming above them is just as damaging, creating a second front in the fight for your engine survival. Even if you stay on top of every oil change, 
the upper half of your engine might still be fighting a slow buildup you can't see. Inside a modern GDI engine, gasoline never passes over the intake valves. It's injected directly into the combustion chamber. That design gives better power and fuel economy, but it removes the old self-cleaning effect that came from fuel washing over the valves in older systems. Without that wash, every vapor and droplet that flows through the intake tract sticks where it lands. Bit by bit, those particles turn into a hard shell of carbon over the valve surfaces. It doesn't take long for that coating to thicken enough to start choking airflow, altering the mixture, and disturbing the smooth rhythm of combustion. The deposits begin as a light film produced by the positive crankcase ventilation system. Every crankshaft rotation sends microscopic oil droplets and vapors back through the intake to be burned off. In a port-injected setup, fuel spray would rinse them away. But with direct injection, nothing stops the residue from drying and hardening. Over thousands of miles, that sticky layer becomes a baked-on crust that blocks the edges of the intake valves from sealing properly. When that happens, your engine starts to breathe unevenly. Idle quality may drop, your throttle response may lag, and you might even hear subtle pinging long before a code ever appears on a scan tool. Now combine that with the diluted oil down below. The gasoline that slipped into the oil pan earlier has already weakened the lubrication film. That means the moving parts, the valve train, lifters, and cam journals are operating with thinner protection. Add abrasive carbon dust from the upper intake and you've created matching zones of wear. One eating away at the top end, another grinding through the bearings underneath. Engines under this double strain lose efficiency in ways few owners ever trace back to the source. The exhaust may look normal, and oil analysis might show only a vague sign of contamination, but the long-term damage unfolds quietly mile after mile. As engines age, the situation gets even worse. Worn rings and aging valve seals leak more vapor back into the intake, pushing even more oil mist into an environment that can't clean itself. Each heat cycle hardens the carbon further, making it nearly impossible to scrape away without mechanical cleaning. Some automakers have acknowledged the problem and tried new solutions. Toyota, for example, developed a dual injection system that combines direct injectors with traditional port injectors. The secondary injectors spray fuel onto the back of the valves, which helps rinse off early deposits. It's a clever compromise that reduces buildup, but it can't stop oil dilution as the engine racks up miles. The system still faces the same chemical challenge. Fuel that enters the crankcase thins the oil regardless of how clean the intake valves stay. The contrast with diesel engines is striking. Diesel fuel has naturally oily properties that lubricate as it burns. Gasoline, on the other hand, acts as a solvent. It strips away lubrication. That's why GDI gasoline engines tend to experience faster degradation if their maintenance intervals stretch too far. Every trace of thin, fuel-contaminated oil combined with dry, carbon-coated valves turns the engine into a collection of metal parts working harder against more resistance. Short trips and stop-and-go driving only intensify it. In those scenarios, oil doesn't reach high enough temperatures to evaporate fuel contamination. So every cold start adds more dilution and more residue to the mix. The result is an engine under attack from both directions. The oil is too thin to protect what's moving, while the valves are too dirty to let air flow freely. Each cycle compounds the next until the system loses balance. Keeping carbon buildup under control isn't just about cleaner combustion. It's about reducing damage from the top down while the fight against dilution continues below. And once you understand that these two processes are connected, simple maintenance begins to look less routine and more like the only way to keep that delicate balance intact before the wear becomes permanent. Frequent oil changes aren't a preference. They're your engine's armor against the thinning effect of fuel and the carbon choking its valves. Stick to shorter intervals, even if the manual promises longer gaps. Synthetic oil resists breakdown better, and a quality catch can traps the vapors that would otherwise feed valve deposits. Let your engine stretch its legs on longer drives so heat can evaporate trapped contaminants. Every GDI engine fights this quiet internal battle, 
and the ones that pass 200,000 miles aren't lucky. They belong to owners who understood that maintenance isn't reactionary. It's the only line of defense, 